20, 30, 45 minutes, uh, depending upon questions. Um, if you guys need to use the restroom, so you can be right over here. Um, but anyways, go ahead and have a seat. Okay. So when you're greeting your clients, you need to have enthusiasm. You need to be um, professional. The, the first five to ten seconds is, is really what they're going to, uh, um, uh, need to say, judge you on. It's really important that you make a good impression, especially with the intro. Offer them a coffee, offer them a water, um, let them know where the restrooms are, and kind of set that expectation that you uh, have some high energy and are willing to uh, meet with them today. Thanks. Okay, folks, well, thanks again for coming in to meet with me. Uh, it's truly important that we take some time today to talk about what it is you guys are looking for in a home. Um, and by doing this now, it's also going to just save us time in the long run. Okay? Um, so, to begin, we're, we're really going to only have three main things that we're going to go through. Okay? And the three main things, first I'm going to introduce myself and a little bit more about the team. Um, second, we're going to go over your criteria. I, I know you guys have come in here with, with some things on your mind about what you're looking for, and you have questions to ask me. That's the second step. We're just going to get it all off your chest. And, and then lastly, I'm going to go through the buyer's, um, uh, what we call flow chart. It, it's really the process of how this is going to look um, over the next couple of weeks or months or however long it takes us to, to, to find a property. Okay? So with that being said, do you guys have any questions to start? I don't think so. So, so again, when you, when you meet with your clients for the first time, um, the first opening thing is to set the expectation. And the expectation is that we have three main objectives. One is to introduce ourselves and um, the team. Uh, just, a little, just a brief overview, we'll go over that here in a second. Uh, second, you want to go over their criteria, or what we call the lead intake form, which looks a little like this. Go through that, and, and I'll, 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 I'll show you how to properly go through it. And then lastly, what we're going to go through is what we call the home purchasing process or, or flow chart. Um, so anyways, we'll continue on. All right, folks. So as you guys know, you know I, I, this is our first time meeting, and uh, I know you don't know anybody on the team, but here is uh, one of our lead guys. Uh, he actually has started our team. His name is Damien, and his wife, Michelle, um, they're, they're husband and wife, and they're the, really the backbone of our team. You know, they, they, Damien takes all of our listings. Michelle is our transaction coordinator. So what she does is she, um, she takes you from when you go under contract until you close on the property. There's a lot of dates, there's a lot of deadlines in the contract, and, and we don't want that to be overwhelming for you, okay? Now, um, that's myself, and we also have a couple of other people on the team. Okay. We have uh, Jimmy, who's part of our buyer's team, and we have Patty Cornell, who's another buyer specialist on our team. So what I'm getting at is, uh, we're not going to have you introduce you guys today, but if there's a time that we need to go out and take a look at a property, or there's a time you guys need to get a hold of me and have a question, um, we have a whole team of people that, that are going to be able to uh, help you guys throughout the way. Okay. Um, So th that's about it for introducing your team. You have something? Huh. Okay. Um, now, let's get into it. What, what are you guys looking for? I need to know a couple pieces of information. Uh, first, uh, Jimmy, I have your name, I have your phone number, and I yes. have your email. Excellent. Uh, Patty, I also have your name, phone number, email. If you guys could just verify that for me. Cool. Yep. That's great. great. So <laughs> tell me. Um, you know, the, the first thing is, is tell me a little bit more about your situation, okay? Mm, well, so that, that is the most powerful sentence that you can start with. Once you have all of their criteria and all of their information, don't start with specific questions. Start with the question that, that, that states, tell me a little bit more about your situation. When you leave that question open-ended, um, it allows them to kind of take the reins and you're gonna learn quite a bit about their personality at this point. You're also gonna really pick up on what it is their, their priorities are. Whatever comes out of their mouth next is truly what they're gonna be focusing on. Some people will start talking about lending. Some people will start talking about the house itself. Some people will just start talking about you know location and the whole process and, and why they want to move. So let's hear what Jimmy and uh, Patty have to say. So tell me a little bit more about your situation, guys. Gosh, um, well, I mean, lease is up in April. Um, Your lease is up in April? Tired of paying rent. Um, no, 
I just uh, just got back uh, just got back done talking with the lender, and I think we're looking, you know, probably somewhere you know Boulder County, but uh, I don't know. What, what, you got any thoughts on on where? I'm not too picky about that. Not really too picky about it. I want to be in a good neighborhood, so maybe a younger neighborhood that has some kids. So. Okay. And I'm just writing down some of these things that way, you know, it, as we go throughout this process, I don't want to forget your guys' true, you know, motivating factors. Okay. So, you know, I, I see Boulder County. I definitely know you guys want to be in a good neighborhood. Um, let, let's pause and talk about that for a second. Okay. When it comes to a neighborhood or let's say um, school zones, um, I have some limitations to what I'm able to uh, be opinionated on. Okay. If it comes down to your neighborhood and school zones and school ratings or crime ratings, um, I do have to direct you um, to a reputable source. So let's say the uh, Longmont Police Department or the um, uh, Boulder County Schools uh, rating systems website. Um, it's different things like that. I, I can't distinguish it and help you form an opinion about what it is in the neighborhood. Um, basically, I can't discriminate. So, any questions you guys have on that, um, I'll be more than happy to get you the link um, to better um, help you make a judgment call on that. Okay. Okay. Um, so, I'd say we're probably looking for at least a three bedroom, two bath house. Or at least. At least a three bedroom, two bath? At yeah. least. Okay. And a basement. Doesn't have to be finished. We can eventually finish it. But. Two car garage, definitely. Two car garage. Yeah. Basement. And I, I like this space. You know, I would be happy to pay more for more square footage, um, but you know, I understand that there might be limitations to that as well. Okay. Um, as far as square foot goes, I'm going to throw out some numbers, and I just want to see if you guys have, um, you know, if you guys uh, have an idea. All right. Is 2,000 square foot too small, or have no idea? Yeah. Yeah, it's too small. Yeah, it's too small. Too small. Okay. What kind of space are you guys renting in right now? Do you guys know how big your place is? Just under two. Yeah. Just, just under two, and that's, that's why it's easy to know yeah. that it's, it's a little too small? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. I'm just going to make a note here. With that being said, I have to set some parameters in the system. So if I set you guys up with a, a minimum, of, let's say 2200 square foot. Do you think that that would be adequate? Yeah, I think that would be adequate. Yeah. Um, okay, and I'm going to elaborate a little bit more. And, and, and throughout a couple of these questions, I'm going to really going to dig deep. And it, it's not to, uh, it's just to make you think. Okay, so if there was a perfect property that pulled up and it was, let's say, 2160 square foot, would you be upset that we weren't taking a look at that property? That doesn't sound perfect if it's you know only that amount of square footage. But what do you think? I think you're right. Yeah. Awesome. I think let's stick with 22 at the lowest. Awesome. And that's kind of what I'm getting at. When I said it at 2200 square foot, um, that's because that's your absolute minimum threshold. A, a square foot less, and you guys won't want to see it. Is what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, so you mentioned must have three bed, two bath. Um, so well, what are we going to use the bedrooms for? Well, I, uh, I would want a studio, okay. uh, anything from my painting to my music, just kind of like a, a creative space, you know, something that's kind of, you know, my own. Okay. And do you guys have kids? Not yet. Not yet? No. Not yet. And you probably, so you're going to have your bedroom, you're probably going to have, you know, a studio or an office, and then what, what does that look like? Like a guest room and then possibly a kid's room in the future? Yeah. Awesome. Well, I, I do now understand why you need three. We're going to keep it at three. And, and, and again, just, just to reiterate, if there's the perfect property that pulls up and it only has two bedrooms, we're not going to send that to you, correct? Correct. Awesome. Unless it had an unfinished basement, right? I mean, I don't want to overstep any boundaries, but if we could kind of customize the basement, you know, because I, I love that rough, um, kind of unfinished blank canvas. So. I mean, I don't know, maybe a two bedroom uh, with an unfinished basement, would that be able to still show up on our searches? 
and that's why we need, that's why I dig so deep in okay. artists and make you guys think, yes. And that's an absolute great way to look at it. If you're open to that, then I would like to bump it down to a two bedroom minimum with the emphasis on three, but with the reality that there might be a ranch out there with two master suites with a 1500 square foot unfinished basement with a rough end for a bathroom downstairs. Yeah, I mean, that, that wouldn't be so bad. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm actually going what we call three questions deep. We're, we're helping our buyers think through different things. When they're, when they're at home, you know, sitting around the dinner table or, 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 or um, just got off work and sitting on the couch and, and are talking about what they were looking for in a home, they're not going three questions deep with themselves. So some common things that I use are, if the perfect house pulled up and it only had two bedrooms, would you be opposed to looking at that with an unfinished basement? Or if the perfect property pulled up and it met all of your criteria, but it was $5,000 over your max budget, would you still be opposed to looking at that? By, by, by going three questions deep, it really helps um, them think it through, but it also helps you make sure that you set up the absolute best search. The, the, the worst thing that, that, that happens is that we have these meetings, we go back into our office and we start to set up the search and we think, oh gosh, I should have asked them this question or I, I didn't ask them this question and now I have to call them again. By going through this uh, in a timely manner but yet digging through all of those questions, you're gonna save them time and you're also gonna be able to set up the best search possible. So um, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna do two other things. We're gonna talk about price, we're gonna talk about location and, and really pick up on the cues that I use um, to hone in on location because they already have an idea of where they wanna live and the price point they wanna live at but when you go three questions deep, you can really have them start to really think about things full on. All right, so um, so guys, you know, I appreciate you guys giving me that. Um, before we go any further, are there any you know must-have needs or wants or anything that I, that I just want to make note of? I don't think any more than what we've already told you. Awesome, great. Let's talk about price. No one likes to talk about price, but let's talk about it. Okay. Yeah. So he's uh, the breadwinner here, so I'll let her take this one. Okay, great. And, and you guys have said that you guys had spoken with the lender at, when I asked at the beginning, right? Yes. Uh, tell me how far that, that conversation went. Uh, they have all of our information right now. We've been they do. qualified. Yeah. Great. Um, and they have told us that you know our max point is five hundred and twenty-five thousand. The max. The max. Max, max is five twenty-five. Mm -hmm. So right. comfortably, I think we would be setting at. You know, I don't want to go to our max point. So I mean, comfortably, I would say between 450 and 475. 450 and 475? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna set you with a threshold max at 475. Okay. Okay. That means the perfect house came up for 476. It wouldn't send to you. Uh, I mean, you could do it. I'll tell you what, the reason why I ask these questions is because it makes you guys think. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna set it up for 475 right now. Price is, is touchy, all right? You guys are probably gonna get, get out of here and go back and say, well, what would our monthly payment be at 475? Go, go through and talk about it. I wanna let you know that when I set this up, it's not gonna send you anything over 475. So if you guys you know, talk it over and look at it and, and, and speak with the lender again, and you find out that maybe you should put it at 480, then, then let me know I can change it like that, okay? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, okay, let's talk about location. Um, location is, is very key. It's key to buying everything. You know, if, if location wasn't important, I'd put you in a property in Ohio, right? <laughs> so location is definitely important. Um, tell me, so you say Boulder County. Let, let's, ex let's elaborate on that. How far north are we gonna be going? Well, you know, uh, I, I kind of do more Freelance stuff, so um, it'd be, you know, you, you'd be commuting to the office. So okay, yeah, let's let's, let's start there. Patty, where do you work? Um, I work on in the middle of Longmont. In the middle of Longmont. Mm -hmm. Okay, so middle of my sheet's gonna be Longmont. All right. So ideally, so you do a lot of freelance work, and she's gonna be one having to commute. Yep. But you're also gonna be the one maybe getting groceries, or you guys gonna go do date night and stuff like that. That's true. 
So, you know, what does that kind of drive time look for you guys as, as far as a maximum goes? Um, and I'm gonna throw some things out there. Is, is birth it okay, or are we gonna try and stick into the city limits of long birth? I'd say stick on the city limits of long month. City limits of long month? Yeah. Okay. And so that looks like um, as far north as 66 to me, correct? Yeah. Okay. And how about as far east? How, how far east are we going to go? Are we going to go to I-25? Are we going to go to County Line Road? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, County Line Road would probably be my threshold. Because That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I don't want to do too much more. I don't want to be in my yeah, first touch on there. Uh, And then south. How far south are we going to go? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be on this side. I'm sorry? I don't want to be on like the east, like Third Avenue, east side, that kind of thing. So like, you know, where, I don't know, like. Should we move this further in from County Line Road then? No, no County Line Road is good. Okay. I think I know what she's saying. So you, you kind of want, there's certain parts of Longmont that you want. So it's not just all about north, south, east, and west. Right. And that's great. Right. So you see here where, where you begin with the north, south, east, and west, that it really has their mind jog through the town, and they know little pockets they may or may not want. Now, if you have an out-of-town buyer and they need to really go out there and feel the, feel the area, it's going to be a little different. Uh, but this is a great example to really just focus on one city and one city limit only. And um, for those of you that you know aren't familiar with Longmont, um, some of this might not make sense, but just listen to the questions. It's all about the questions that I'm asking them to really hone in on. And, and what I'm doing is I'm just drawing a very, very basic map that they can see visually so that way I know when I go to set up that search, I have absolutely exactly where they want to be. Um, so, I've lived in Longmont for a little while, and, I, and I, I, I get what you're saying, okay? So, if we go county line, and let's, let's take a couple of, of places. Okay. We have uh, 9th Avenue or 3rd Avenue, mm -hmm. okay? So, you say you don't necessarily want to be around that east side of Maine. Right. Um, between 9th and 3rd? Yes. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to draw Main Street right here. Okay. Which is 287. And third pretty much goes through along this way, up, and Ninth Avenue is over here. Okay, now let me just um, have my phone. Can we pull up a map? So when I'm looking at the map here, C3 or C9, all right, so tell me the parts that you want to stay out of. So I, th I think you would agree with me if I said So what sense. we're doing here is, is feel free, pull up your cell phone, maybe bring a laptop, maybe bring a, an iPad, um, and, and, and let them see the map for themselves. Again, this is just another tool that's really going to get their gears going as far as where they want to live. Um, so, do you guys decide uh, what you guys want to keep out? Yeah, uh, we're looking like, you know, kind of this chunk of, uh, you know, down here, this east side of Maine. North of Ninth is all right for us, but um, I really do love Prospect and Iowan, though. So maybe we could go maybe a little further Just south. Just go further, okay. Yeah. Further south, though, because that wouldn't be too bad of a drive, though. No, that wouldn't be a yeah, Okay. Nice. And definitely the southwest, oops, southwest side of Long Definitely. Yeah, more of the northwest side. Or, uh, or sorry, sorry, southeast side. Is that Just to stay out of. Yeah. Okay. Great. And then, so we go all the way to Nylon, uh, down the southwest side of Longmont. What about hygiene? Yeah, that's in between Longmont and Nylon, right? Uh, that's actually in between uh, Longmont and, and Lines. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I'd be okay. Yeah, there's some pretty nice places out 
Okay. Are we going to go as far um, west as um, Lyons? Mm, no. I wouldn't go past like 75th. Yeah. Perfect, 75th. Great. So take your time here. It, it takes that long and even longer sometimes to really decide where they want to live. Um, just because we used Longmont or, or a city limit only, um, you're going to ask the same questions for uh, different cities. So instead of asking north or south of 9th Street, you would ask, well, do you want to go up as far as Berthoud or whatever town that looks like? Use towns north, south, and east and west. If you're looking to stay in one city, use um, streets north, south, east, and west. Feel free to use your uh, cell phone to get out a map, and uh, we'll continue on. All right. Great guys, well we're, we're almost done here. Um, I do have a couple other things about lending that we didn't yet touch on. Um, who are you talking to? Who has your stuff? Oh, I forgot the name, what was that? Is it Elevations? Okay. Elevations, okay. Here in Longmont, I don't remember the guy's name. Yeah, I think the card is on my dresser. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Okay, great. What we'll do is I would like to call and introduce myself to the lender. Um, maybe I've worked with them before, maybe I haven't. Regardless, I just want to let them know that I'm on the, I'm on the hunt to find this house for you, and they're going to help you with the finance side of things, okay? Awesome. So as we go, um, a lot of questions come up um, that I may or may not be able to answer as far as financing goes. So the different types of loans, um, your down payment, your monthly payment, um, those are all things that I may be able to get a roundabout feel for, but definitely if there's something to do with financing, any questions you guys have when we're looking at a house or whatever, they're going to be able to best answer that. Okay. okay. Now, elevation is pre-approved. We already talked about pre-approval and um, your down payment. What uh, what are we bringing to the table as far as a down payment, uh, percentage-wise? Twenty. About twenty percent. Yeah. Perfect. Your lease is up in April. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask about that. Is that the first of April or the end of? It's in the middle of April. Well, the middle of April is when we move in, so I think they're actually going to give us till the end of April. The end, okay. Yeah, I think that's what our lease says. Okay. Okay. We'd have to double check that. <laughs> Whenever anybody is in a lease or a rental situation, um, a lot of times the common answer is a certain month. But if it's at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month, you really have a 30 day swing that you absolutely want to make sure you know about. The last thing you want to do is think that a lease ends at the end of April and we don't find a house before March. They're probably not getting into that house um, anytime before April 1st. So again, it's just real important to make sure you ask all the questions and make sure you have all the data, uh, especially on this uh, buyer's lead sheet. All right, guys. So um, you know, we introduced ourselves. We went through the uh, the criteria list, and so now um, we're going to go through the. Home buying process. Any questions before we go any further? Always stop every every time that you um, get through a different segment of the console. Stop and ask if they have any questions. Okay, there may be some questions that you haven't asked, but they're ready to tell you, but they're just kind of holding off and waiting to see when it's their turn to talk. All right. So this is again the, the purchasing process. I'm going to make a couple of notes on here, but as we go through, I'm going to give one of you guys the pen, and I want you guys to also make some notes. Okay? This is the very this is this is the most important thing as far as me finding a house for you. Okay? Ask questions as we go, interrupt me as you need, and take notes as you as you please. Okay? So, first, these first three steps, we're actually doing these right now. Okay? Um, I appreciate you meeting with me today. You have already talked to a lender. And now, you, you said you submitted all your documentation, mm -hmm. okay? Have, have they ran all that documentation? Yes. Perfect. So then I'm going to label you guys as what I call a pre-approved buyer, okay? The difference between pre-qualified and pre-approved is that pre-qualified means you've spoken with the lender, but you haven't sent them everything. Because you guys have sent them everything, you guys are pre, and they've gone through and reworked all the paperwork, you guys are pre-approved. Okay. It's a leg up in the game, and I, and I commend you guys for doing that. Okay. Always, always, always um, explain the difference between pre-approval and pre-qualification. 
Uh, I'd say about 50% of the time buyers have never talked to a lender. 50% of the time buyers have talked to a lender and only a very few times uh, buyers have already gone through that entire lending process. All right, so the third thing we went and uh, looked at your criteria. Now, what I'm gonna do with this criteria is I'm gonna build a my site uh, or a portal, if you will. I'm gonna link you guys directly up with the MLS, okay? And what that's gonna do is I'm gonna plug in your parameters. It's gonna generate listings that are on the market that meet our parameters. Interesting. It, it is, it's, it's, it's awesome. And, and the nice thing is it's directly linked to your MLS. So there's no third party website trying to advertise things to you and it's relevant information. As soon as something goes under contract, it's gonna tell you in that website. As soon as something hits the market, it's gonna send it to you to your website and your email instantaneously. That, and we do this because we don't want you guys to miss anything, okay? I, I'm out on appointments, I'm doing, uh, I'm showing houses, I'm doing appointments like this, I'm on the phones. I, I, it, the way technology is, is things pop up very quickly, so I don't want you guys to miss anything, so it not only sends it to you like that, it sends it to me. There's, there's no more of this day and age stuff where they send it to me, I look at it, make sure it's right for you, and then I send it to you. We're both gonna get notified. So, with that being said, this website allows you to do a couple of things. It's gonna allow you to trash the ones you like, or it's gonna allow you to trash the ones you dislike, and it's also gonna allow you to favorite the ones you like, okay? okay. Um, feel free to play around with it, but what, what else I'm gonna do is after we get done, I'm gonna send you an email with a link that shows you how to use that My Site portal. <coughs> it's not complicated by any means, but by watching a, a quick four minute video, it's, you're gonna just expedite your time and, and navigate through it. Okay. Okay. Um, selecting properties. So what I encourage you to do is when you're on that website, favorite the ones you wanna see. The ones you like and are willing to go out and take a look with me, put them in your favorite folder. It's very easy for me to log into the back end of it and pull those favorites and put compile a list of the ones we wanna see. I get them scheduled, we go out and take a look. Now, when I get them scheduled, or when I'm uh, starting to schedule them, some of them require notices. Uh, maybe there's a two hour notice or a four hour notice, sometimes even a 24 hour notice required in order to get into that property, all right? That's only sometimes, right? So give me a little bit of time, I'll be able to set them up, and we'll go see it at a time that meets your guys' needs, okay? okay. Um, when we're not looking at the properties, we're, I'm gonna get you guys in, and let's, let, there's a couple different things that happen. Sometimes you walk into a property and you think, oh yeah, th this is the one for us. Just give me a little head nod, you know, tap me on the shoulder and say, hey Bruce, we're gonna be here a little longer than what we thought because we really like it. If that's the case, then I'm gonna call and I'm gonna adjust the other showings uh, accordingly. I do not want you guys to be limited into, a, I don't want you guys to have limited time in a house that you really, really like, all right? Now on the flip side of that, um, I don't wanna waste your time and please don't waste mine when we're out there either. If there's a house you, you see that you dislike or don't, you know, we pull up and it's just not the neighborhood you thought or the, you know, you walk in the first, you know, first five seconds of the house and it smells like smoke or, or a cat dander or something like that, you wanna get out, let's go. We'll go on to the next, I'll adjust the appointments, I'll push them up. So uh, what I'm getting at is, is take your time. Take your time in houses, but at the same token, if it's not the house, let's go. Um, do the properties. When we find that, that house, when we find that house you're, you, that you wanna make an offer on, um, I'm gonna put together the contracts, okay? And the contracts are lengthy, okay? They're 16 pages, they're 16 pages long, and there's actually two contracts I'll be sending you. One that allows me to represent you on the, on the purchase of that property, and the other one's gonna be the contract to buy that property, okay? When we're done here, I'm gonna send you two things. I'm gonna send you that link to the, um, to the my site or the portal to watch that video. I'm also gonna send you a blank copy of the contract and a blank copy of the agreement between you and I. I highly encourage that you guys go over those contracts because what happens all the time is we go out and take a look at a property, we love it, we wanna make an offer on it, and now you don't understand the contracts. And there's a lot of lag time there. I want you guys to understand the contracts to be confident with making an offer, 
But if we take too much time in looking over contracts and, and maybe a day goes by or two days goes by, <clears throat> that perfect house may be off the market. So I really encourage you to take a look at it, ask me questions if they come up, and then when we write up that offer, I'm gonna go over that contract in detail with you. I, I'm still gonna review it with you. But if you look at it beforehand, it's just gonna be a refresher course for you, okay? Now, once, once we have that offer in hand and you guys sign it, it's solely an offer until we submit it to the, um, the selling agent. The seller and the selling agent are gonna look at it. And once both parties sign, so it's buyer seller, then it, not, it, it, it transforms from an off to a contract or a binding contract. So you're not under contract until they sign, okay? Now, once they accept the contract, this is where, this is where my work begins, okay? Anybody these days, you guys, can, you guys all have access to the internet. Anybody can go out and find the house online that they wanna buy, all right? That's not where I get paid. I get paid when you guys go under contract to negotiations. Now I draw this line here because once you guys go under contract, I'm gonna be working with Michelle and she's gonna take over and make sure that the contract is being monitored the way it should. I'm still gonna be here for negotiations. Our team's gonna be here for negotiations, but this is where all hands are on deck, okay? And the greatest thing is once you guys go under contract, no one can take that away from you unless you decide to back out of it. And there are different ways to back out, and we'll go over this here in a second. So, I'm gonna have you take the pen, either one, and there's gonna be some things that, A, I'm gonna encourage you to take notes on, B, you may wanna take note, additional notes on other things. When you go under contract, the very first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna submit earnest money. Earnest money is about one to two percent of the purchase price of the property, okay? It's, it's part of your down payment though, okay? It, it really is your skin in the game, but it's not money lost at this point, okay? So if it's a $200,000 property, earnest money is gonna be about $2,000, give or take, um, whatever, okay? Earnest money is negotiable. I have seen some times where a property is a, a $200,000 property, and earnest money, they're looking for $10,000. Well, some people don't have $10,000 right there in there. We can negotiate whatever you guys would like, okay? Um, once earnest money is submitted, it's gonna be held and cashed by a, a, um, a title company, usually a title company, okay. usually a third party company. What I'm getting at is I don't hold it, you guys don't hold it, sellers don't hold it, seller's agent doesn't hold it, third party company holds it, okay? Um, once you have that submitted, on the buying side of things, we're gonna be um, ordered an inspection. I'm gonna give you guys a list of of licensed insured inspectors, and I highly recommend that you hire a licensed insured inspector because you guys are technically making hire for somebody to go evaluate the home, okay? They're gonna get in the home and they're gonna test everything. We're gonna be looking for health and safety issues as they come up, and those are negotiation points. Um, if something comes up that's health and safety related, we have the right to ask the seller to fix that. They also have the right to come back to us and say, okay, we'll fix it, or, uh, we'll only fix half of it. Or, we don't want to fix anything, but we'll give you a credit. We'll give you a, a, a dollar amount credit for the repairs. Or, we'll take money off the price of the property. Whatever, whatever, it's all negotiation, but there's a lot of different ways we can do that, okay? Okay. Once we get through the inspection, on the, uh, on the same token, your, your lender is gonna be doing a couple of things, okay? They're gonna be ordering an appraisal. An appraisal, is when the, the lender has a, a, a person go out to the property and evaluate the value of the home. They're gonna, they're gonna look at the home, they're gonna look at comparable homes in the neighborhood, and they're only gonna go back about six months. Okay. They're gonna try and pull together recently sold properties that justify the purchase price of this house. Okay. Now, with that being said, there's three outcomes to an appraisal. The appraisal comes in over what we offered, which is great. Congratulations, you guys got some equity, right? Or it's gonna come in at value, which again, congratulations, we made an educated decision. The house is worth what it's worth, and we continue on. The only time we're gonna really worry of going to negotiations with an appraisal is when there's an appraisal deficit. When there's an appraisal deficit, we go into negotiation because the couple, the both parties have the rights to do a couple things. You have the right to say, 
no, our present, the house isn't worth any penny over what the bank said, so we're not going to pay anything over. On the flip side, the seller has a right to say, well, I don't care what the bank said. You guys said you were willing to pay this, and I want, I want the full price. 90% of the time, buyer and seller work together to resolve that issue. If we can't resolve the deficit, we'll get you out of the contract. We'll protect your earnest money. We'll get that back, and we'll continue to look at properties. If there's a deficit and we work together, then maybe seller comes down a few thousand dollars, maybe you come up a few thousand dollars. Any money that you come up to is out of pocket. It's added on to your down payment though, just so you guys know, okay? Okay. Um, and the lender's gonna be doing a few other things around there. They're gonna ask you a couple questions, they're gonna have some documents for you. And then over here, um, we're gonna be working with the title company, with the sellers, we're gonna make sure that they record the title um, from the seller's name into your name, uh, free and clear of any liens or encumbrances, and we're also gonna put title insurance on the, on the deed, okay? After all this is said and done, it's about 30 to 45 days, and when we get the funds to close or when everything's approved, you guys will sit down, much like we are now, possibly at a title company, possibly right here, to sign documents and close on the property. Um, when you close on that property, um, you sign and you get keys that same day, unless something else was otherwise negotiated. Okay? So that's that's the, the home buying process. Any questions? You've done a great job explaining all that. Thank you. Great. No, no problem. So we're done here. And before we wrap up, there's a few other things that we didn't quite touch on. Okay? And a few of them are going to be um, the different types of properties that come up. Uh, for sale by owners, um, new builds. Um, you know, maybe you guys will have a friend that says, hey, I'm thinking about listing my house and it's not on the market yet, okay? Um, all of those situations, 100% comfortable with, I've done it all, uh, for for sale by owners. If you see something online and, and you know that somebody's trying to sell it themselves, please, please, please do me a favor and do not call that seller, okay? A couple different reasons. I have some questions for them and B, when you call them, you may overindulge a couple pieces of information that, that, that will give them a leg up. Anyways, I do this for a living, this is my profession. Um, let me know who that person is and their number. I'll give them a call. And there's another reason before this. I've never not had a seller pay me the commission. So when you guys are out buying a home, you guys actually do not pay myself or our team any money unless the seller is not willing to pay us our commission. And at that time, we'll have that conversation. But by me calling that for sale by owner first, we'll get them to pay, okay? okay. Um, as far as new builds go, I have a couple of things in the folder that I'll leave with you guys. It's a little bit about new builds and, and how we're able to represent you on new builds, how the price doesn't change for you. Um, whether you have representation or not when you walk into a new build, the price is the price. I highly encourage you that you have representation. Okay, this is, again, that's my profession, where I do this day to day. Um, when you walk into a new build, the new build communities have their own contracts. And the new builds or the developers, they hire a lawyer to draw up a contract that benefits who? The builder. The builder. All right? Mm -hmm. So, when they have a lawyer dropped up all these contracts, I mean, you guys have, you guys have heard horror stories, right? Mm -hmm. about, yeah. about lawyer contracts and this and that. I would think it's in your best interest to have someone like me at least look them over, at least represent you, and be there for questions. I have a lot of questions I like to ask builders that you guys probably don't know to ask, okay? Um, so when that time comes, if you guys, even if you, let's say you have Saturday brunch, and you guys get done, and you guys are driving back home, and you see a new build, and you think, wow, I wonder what those prices are. It's okay, pull in, but call me. You guys got me on speed now, right? Mm -hmm. Call me. I'll drop what I'm doing and I'll meet you over at that new build. Because the moment you walk in that threshold without representation, they're going to prey off of you. I'm not saying you're going to sit there and sign a contract that day, but if I don't walk in with you that first time, they will not allow me to represent you on that new build. Really? They won't, yeah. Wow. And so read over these, read over these documents. Let me know if you have any questions about new builds. New builds aren't scary. I don't mean to sit here and scare you about new builds. Okay. But I do also know that you need representation. Okay. 
Okay. The way that I put it is the new build communities have their lawyers draw up a contract. Okay. Think about uh, 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 two people getting a divorce. One party is going to have a lawyer draw up the terms of the divorce. The other party, what are they going to do? Are they going to go to this divorce lawyer and say, I want the same representation you're representing them with and I want my terms stated? No. Both parties are going to hire a separate attorney, right? It's the same thing with new builds for me. The new build has their representation. You absolutely have a right and need your representation. Okay? Okay. Um, so that, that's, that's about it with that. Um, the last thing I'll say is that when, before we go out and take a look at properties, um, I need to know that you guys are committed to me or our team. Okay? I don't have any contracts for you here today because we just met. I, I think you guys are, you know, you gotta get the feel for me. You gotta make sure I know my stuff. But when the time comes that you guys wanna proceed forward and go start to take a look at the houses, I need to make sure that I'm the one that's gonna be representing you and you also need representation. So before we go out and take a look at properties, I will have you guys sign an agreement with me and it's called the Exclusive Right to Buy or I call it a loyalty agreement. And again, I'm gonna send you a blank copy of that. Look that over, let me know if you have any questions, but before we go out and take a look at that first property, I'm gonna have you guys sign that for me, okay? Okay. Any questions? No, there's nothing to sign. Well, because I have <clears throat> because I have you guys sign a loyalty agreement to me, I think it's only fair that I, we, our team has developed an, an agreement that I can share with you guys. Okay, because if you're going to commit to me, I'm going to commit to you. So take this guy over and look it over. This is more of our wise team loyalty agreement to our buyers. All right. So you guys have quite a few things to look over. I'm going to send you those emails. And um, if you guys have any questions in the meantime before you hear from me next, uh, please feel free to reach out, but you guys should hear from me no later than 24 hours. Okay. All right? Okay. Any well, questions? No, I said no. Great, guys. I really appreciate you guys coming in again, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Excellent. Thank you.